I started our conversation by asking about the supply risk in Libya and how closely the market should be looking at this. And then we expanded into what he sees as some of the other key black swan events that could face the oil market this year. Listen in. It's kind of that same dynamic that we look out the forward market um, regardless of what happens to disruptions on the front end, is likely to be oversupplied on the floor. Because you take, you know, take recently the Shahara fuel has gone up, it's gone down more recently, up and down 300,000 barrels per day. So if you did lose that supply that came out of Libya right now, or a portion of it, most of the market would view it as being temporary, as we've seen over the course of you know the last several years. So yeah, it would create and reinforce a spot price move to the upside in that 75 potential plus range, but it wouldn't do anything the back end. It's really going to support that idea of backwardation and carry in the oil market. When you take a 30,000 foot step back and you look at the state of the market today, what do you see as the biggest black swan event that could potentially disrupt this supply demand dynamic that we've been following for some time now in the state of the market today? It's funny when you think about what we have learned over the last year. Um, OPEC has shown its ability to increase production very high, reduce production substantially. So flexibility there. What do we learn about China? They can stimulate and they can delever. They've seen a big stimulus in January, but delevering last year. What have we seen with the U.S.? They've gone hawkish, they've gone dovish. What that starts to do is take out your tail risk, both to the upside as well to the downside. You know, in terms of talking about the ability of the market to trade in a tighter and tighter range. So then you have to go to your question, where does the risk in the system go? Well, if we think about it, if it's the policymaker swinging policy back and forth, that's where the risk really needs to start to reside. It goes into the sovereign balance sheets, and so it goes uh, diffuses throughout uh, more on the sovereign side. So, you know, if, we, if I look at it, you know, a black swan event, um, you know, more likely than not, it's likely to come out of one of the sovereigns. Can I also ask you about some of the data that we're seeing coming out of China and also the state of play in the U.S. right now? Are you seeing any tangible evidence that demand is actually starting to decline as a result of perhaps a deterioration in the global economic climate right now? No, absolutely the opposite. I like to point out, due to the bottoms-up analysis on commodity demand out there, um, it's relatively rock solid, um, whether if you're talking about metals or um, energy. And when we think about um, the, the energy picture, the question I'm getting is the demand is so solid in China right now, how much of it is going um, for restocking? I think it's key there to think that China destocked a lot last year. Fears over uh, a trade war, a devaluation of its currency, they destocked, so some of that is going to restock um, those previous destocking. But I think the bottom line, the answer to the question, demand looks really good right now. Jeff Curry is Head of Commodities Research at Goldman Sachs. We also spoke about other issues facing the market, including that potential extension to the OPEC Plus supply cut accord and what's happening in Iran and Venezuela. You can catch the rest of that interview on Capital Connection or check in on CNBC.com. Tanvir, back over to you.